Hey everyone, welcome back to the Microservices Masterclass series. In the last few episodes, we built individual microservices with ExpressJS, PostgreSQL, Redis, and Kafka, right? Today, it's time to containerize them using Docker, the industry standard for packaging and running applications. We will look at dockerizing each service, setting up a clean Docker Compose YAML file, handling environment variables, and making sure services talk to each other smoothly inside a Docker network. Before we start, why Docker? It gives you consistent environments across development, testing, and production. It isolates each service, so no more works on my machine issues. And it lets you easily scale and deploy microservices using orchestrators like Kubernetes later. Now, if you ask me prerequisite for this video, well, technically, I would highly recommend you to cover all the videos in order from the microservices masterclass series. But if you really want to jump onto this video without any pre-context, I will give you a very short brief on files and folder structure. Alright, the main core folders are services. Inside we have all the microservices, icon service, API gateway, auth service, mock central bank service, and transaction service. And also we have packages folder, which is like a common NPM modules, which I'm directly importing as a local path in all the services wherever it's required. And then main important file is this Docker Compose YAML file, and I have this small shell scripts to make it easy. That's a very short brief about the folder structure and files. Now let's start with one of the microservices, like let's pick account service, and inside we already defined it as Docker file. So let's go through this definition first. All right, we are starting with Node 22 Alpine image, and I'm naming it as builder for now, and the working directory is workspace. And in the first step, if you see, I'm basically copying the packages. So these packages are nothing but my local NPM packages, which I'm using across all the microservices, this specific folder packages, where we have four common modules, constants, Kafka client, logger, and Redis client. So first I'm basically copying these folders as is into this workspace folder, okay? And then I'm installing TypeScript at the global level, and I'm building all four packages with NPM install and NPM run build command. So once all four packages are built, I'm basically copying only package JSON and package hyphen log JSON into services slash account service. So the whole idea is we basically wanted to maintain the same folder structure inside the Docker also. There is a reason for it because we are, as we are using these packages, which are kind of being imported as a relative path. So that's kind of a tricky. It is not a kind of a standard use case, but in our microservices structure, that's how it is being used. So once we copy package and package log JSON files, I'm basically installing it. And once the packages are installed, I'm copying all the necessary files for the build. Looks like this specific line is not really required because we already copied over here. So, but we can skip this. Once all the required files are in place for the build, I'm just calling npm run build. Okay. So till this part, all the changes are in this builder stage build. So I'm using multi-stage because just to save, save space. Well, usually for the normal backend application, there is not much of a big space we will be saving. But for the front-end applications, at least for the single-page application, there will be a significant difference. I can make a separate video on it. Let me know in the comments. So this builder stage is done over here. Then I'm starting the different stage again with the same base image as Node 22 Alpine and current working directory is workspace. And now if you see, I'm copying all the files from builder base image. So this is like a first stage of the Docker build. And I'm copying all these files from this stage builder. Okay. That's how it's basically the multi-stage build works. So I'm copying packages folder, account services dist folder, because once the build is done, all the changes required for the account service will be in dist folder. And I'm basically copying package JSON and package log JSON files. That's it. And then later I'm just setting node underscore env to production and I'm calling npm ci. That's it. Where it installs all the modules from the package log and I'm exposing 3000. That's it. And the entry point is dist slash app.js. Simple. Okay. That's pretty much it for the account service Docker file. And if you can guess, it will be same for the rest of the microservices except mock central bank service because in this case, we are not using any packages and all. So it's kind of a straight build. Let me open Docker file over here. So again, node 22 Alpine, there are no packages over here. I'm just build, copying all the necessary files and I'm calling npm run build. And with this line, it basically installs only the production packages and exposing 3000. And the command is basically inside this slash index.js. That's it. And if you see the pattern, all the microservices will be exposed with 3000 port only because all the services inside their own respective containers, it will be listening at port 3000. So that's why I'm exposing port 3000. Simple. Okay. This you will get more clarity once we cover the Docker Compose file. I hope till this part it's clear. So I'll just open auth service just to get a more reference. So in the Docker file, if you see, it's more or less similar when compared to the account service. That's it. 
okay and we also added docker ignore file where i'm just ignoring node module so that when we are trying to build it should not copy from this specific node modules by mistake also right and this is a good standard practice all right now let's move to docker compose where we wire all the microservices together for all the existing us you might have already noticed all the services we've been covering in all the previous videos like till postgres redis kafka and kafka ui now in the same docker compose i introduced all the microservices like api gateway vbank auth service vbank account service transaction service and mock central bank service and also if you can guess these four microservices the definition would be almost similar so let's open vbank auth service for a change for the image i'm naming it as vbank slash auth service current latest and the docker file i'm clearly mentioning services slash auth service slash docker file so it will pick so this docker compose file will pick the docker file from this specific folder and try to build the image and the image name would be vbank slash auth service colon latest that's it and the container name i'm giving it as auth service and if you notice here i just commented this post section where this auth service would expose to 3001 in host machine for now i'm commenting this out if you can guess by this time let me know in the comments but i'll cover this very soon in the video okay and then i'm passing env file if you see here this is how we are loading the environment variables well technically this is not a good practice kind of morely onto the bad practice because usually as part of the build systems and all it's better to pull the environment values from the like secure key value services like vault or even store these as secrets in the docker for the demonstrating purpose i just use env.production well again as i'm mentioning highlighting explicitly this is not kind of a good practice but to streamline the whole process for you guys to understand i'm just loading the environment variables from the file okay and clearly i'm mentioning as dot env.production well technically it should not be also part of the git history just that i'm having this env.production.example which will be pushed i think that's okay because all these are like very temporary variables then moving on if you see we have this depends on column where i'm indirectly saying that this vbank auth service depends on postgres redis kafka and also vbank api gateway so api gateway again this is part of the actual microservices and if you can guess again overall in the microservices only service that should be exposed to the public is api gateway and if you can guess now this 3001 that's why i'm explicitly defined and commented because in the test cases we are actually checking a health check endpoint for each microservice that will fail and then later i'll uncomment this one so that it will be exposed then we can close the whole loop that's it now more or less the same definition will be applied for the other two microservices that is account service and also transaction service there will be a slight change in the definition for the api gateway because api gateway don't have much of a dependencies except redis so that's why i just added redis over here and also if you notice here for each dependency block we have this condition as service healthy now if you can guess this service healthy also we are explicitly defining in postgres if i open postgres over here i have this health check okay and this is the command so command shell pg is ready or not as user and interval timeout and retrace so this is how the health check we are defining for each uh, supporting services so that's how it's different for postgres and if you look at the redis this slightly the command would be different but the structure is like what is the test command what is the interval timeout and retrace simple okay it would be similar to kafka also over here all right so i'm skipping the other microservices because the definition would be similar now let's go with the mock central bank service again this is uh, for the new years it might be confusing in short this is basically a supporting service for vbank transaction service that's it okay here in this case it's slightly different because we really don't need any dependencies it just boots up the env file from here and just starts that's it okay and docker file also if you see mock central bank service slash docker file all right there is one important change i added in kafka definition which is not there in the previous episodes and that is basically this kafka init.sh and I'm just attaching this as volumes inside this specific docker entry point in it db slash the same file. So as per the definition, if we keep any shell script files inside this docker hyphen entry point hyphen in it db dot d folder. So these scripts will be executed before Kafka starts. Well, technically I did face some challenges because this shell script will be executed before Kafka starts. Well, technically we need this to be executed once the Kafka has started. Because if you look at the definition for Kafka in it .sh, the whole purpose is to basically create the topics necessary for this entire microservices architecture to be in place. However, this will technically should load after Kafka has started. So I just given it as sleep 10. I know this is kind of a bad practice, but just to close the loop, I just given it as 10. If you have any other better alternative approaches, drop a comment, we'll improve together. All right, so that's pretty much it on the entire dockerizing the microservices. Now let's spin up all the services and see how this goes. 
So I'll just open Docker desktop just to make sure that there are no containers now. All right, as you can see, it's all empty. Now let's open terminal. So first we'll start only these services, these four supporting services. And for this, we can actually give instead of docker compose up hyphen D, which basically spins up all the services which are defined in this docker compose. So I just created one simple init supporting underscore services dot sh. And if you see, we can actually pass these names over here so that only these containers will be spinned up. Simple. Okay. So let's run this simple init supporting services. All right. So all services are up and running. Let's verify from the docker desktop. Okay. Kafka, Redis, Kafka, Postgres, all are running and are exposed at the different ports. Cool. I hope till this part it's clear and helpful. If so, consider giving it a like and subscribe to support me. All right. Now let's spin the other services. And for the rest of the services, we can just call docker compose up hyphen D. That also I just given it as a simple shell script. That's it. Docker compose up hyphen D. So I can just do run all services. As you can see for Postgres, Redis and other supporting services, we have the status as healthy because we define this health check over here. Okay, looks like all services are started. Let's verify from the Docker desktop as well. Okay, if you can see here the most important account service, auth service, let me just zoom in if it's better. Yeah, account service, auth service and transaction service. There are no ports exposed. Okay, account, auth, transaction, the last three services in this table. There are no ports exposed. The only microservice is exposed as part of the vBank is API Gateway. Mock Central Bank service, again, as I mentioned, it's basically a mocking service. That's it. So how do you verify this whole setup? Remember, we have this end-to-end -end test cases, which makes our life easy to make sure everything is up and running. So let's run those test cases. Okay, so let's switch to the terminal e 2 test and then just call npm run test. So let's wait for the whole complete flow test to be done. So if you see here, three test cases are failed out of 33. And if you can guess, those three are auth service, account service, and transaction service. So let's open this file and understand what exactly is this one. And just hide the sidebar as well. Okay. So in the auth service, as you can see here, auth service get health endpoint. And if you look at the auth service definition, and this is coming again from config auth service, similar to account service and transaction service. So let's open config over here. So if you see here, this is my host machine, right? And the default values for auth service is 3001, account service is 3002, and transaction service is 3003. And I have this central bank service also, which is kind of a mock service again, which is exposing at 5010, okay? Now, if you see here, this auth service is trying to access the 3001 port from my host machine. And the reason it is failing because as we didn't expose these ports, right? It is not able to get this health endpoint. Simple. That's it. Okay. Now let's do one thing. So now let's quickly expose the ports and rerun the test cases. So over here, auth service. Let's uncomment. And also transaction service. All right. Now let's restart the services one more time. For that, we can just simply call the same command run all services as you can see here transaction service is recreate in status all services recreated so now it's spinning up all right looks like all services started now let's verify from the docker desktop as you can see here all service transaction service and account service now the ports are exposed as i mentioned all the microservices within the vbank are are actually defined to run at port 3000 only the reason why it is 3000 if you can guess in let's say auth service env production the port i define it as 3000 but in development it, it is 3001 so that's the difference so all the microservices within their own containers are running at 3000 and are exposed to the development environment kind of values which are like for the auth service that is 3001 transaction service that is 3003 account service as 3002 simple okay and mock central bank service is 5010 that's it okay now let's run the test cases and see whether the health endpoints are also working or not. All right, at least if you see from here, 01 health check test, all tests are passing. Let's wait for this final test, which will usually take time because it's doing all the transaction level end to end test cases. All right, finally, all test cases are passed. So that's how you can dockerize all the microservices with the Docker Compose file. 
and you can basically deploy this in any VPS or whatever the remote server you prefer. So for the existing viewers, you might be having one small doubt like how exactly API Gateway is communicating to the other microservices like account service, auth service or transaction service, right? So now let's open API Gateway. In the .env, we have this auth service URL as localhost 3001, account service as 3002, transaction service as 3003. Well, really it's not the case. It should be there in env.production region. And if you see here, for the auth service, I defined it as auth-service 3000. For the account service, as account-service 3000. And for the transaction service, I defined it as transaction-service 3000. The reason behind this is, so API Gateway, auth service, transaction service, other microservices are all running under the same network. Each service can ping other service based on their container name. Over here, if you see API Gateway, auth service, transaction service, and account service. Let's say for the account service, if it is AS in the container name, then you need to mention over here as AS colon 3000, not account service. That's how it is. Now you might be having another doubt like, okay, how exactly we can define these names? So these names are just simply defined here. In the Docker Compose for each microservice, we have this container name label. That's it. All right. You now have a full production grade microservices architecture running on Docker. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to support me. What part of dockerizing microservices do you find the most challenging? Let me know in the comments. All right. That's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.